Hi everyone, Bobby here, and the reason I'm speaking at a million miles an hour, like I've just downed some kind of experimental energy drink, is we're going to go through the cage system in as quick a time as possible. I've no idea how long this video or how short this video is going to be. I'm just going to get on with it and give you as concise as possible a rundown of the cage system covering major chords, major triads, major arpeggios, pentatonic scales and seven note diatonic scales and I'm going to do the same for uh, minor chords and minor scales and triads and arpeggios as well. Get on with it! So before we get on with it, if you like this content then please hit like and subscribe, it will really help to grow the channel. Now, the cage system. Some of this is probably stuff that you're already uh, familiar with, but in a nutshell, the cage system is fundamentally based on the uh, first position open chords of C, A, G, E, and D, spelling caged. But we're dealing with movable versions of those chords. So first of all, we need to spell the word caged across the neck. Um, we'll start with C as a C shape. This is our good old fashioned cowboy C. And then we move on to C as an A shape. So a bar chord that you're probably very familiar with. Quick origin story for this chord shape. If we played a, a regular first position A chord and we freed up our first finger to allow for a movable chord and then we turned it into a bar chord, we keep moving it up the fretboard, but at some point it gets very, very hard to cram three fingers onto one fret. So just know that the origin of this shape is an A shape and then we'll call it an A shape from, from now on. Now the G shape, this is the one that throws some people when they're learning the case system. You could technically take um, a first position G chord like this one with the open B string and you could shift it up and bar it. So you find your C note on the eighth fret on the low E string and you could play this. I very rarely use this, this chord shape, but it kind of sounds like you've got a capo on the fifth fret. It's pretty cool. One alternative is to do this. So you have to miss out the, the high E string for this particular voicing, or we could completely drop the root and we could have this shape. Um, as long as we visualize this root note, because the case system is as much about visualization as it is about playing the actual chord voices. There might be some voicings within the cage system that you might not play, that might not turn up in your everyday playing, but when you start visualizing triads and arpeggios and scales, they're very, very useful from a, from a visualization standpoint. So this particular voicing is very nice. If you've seen my video on kind of Hendrix, John Mayer, Inspire Fills, then a lot of that is using the cage system and this voicing comes in very handy. If we move on, we're spelling cage, we're spelled C, A, G. Alternative for that shape, you could have this. I've got diagrams coming up on the screen, not yet because I'm making the video as we speak, but I will have diagrams on the screen that you'll be able to see and you'll be able to download these as well. I'm gonna put a link below to the uh, to download. So we've got C, A, G. Now C is an E shape, you probably know this bar chord, uh, so the origins of that, it starts, it started life as, a, as an E chord and then we free up the, the first finger, change the fingering so we can shift it up and make a movable version of it. So C is a D shape, that's just like taking a, a D chord like this and shifting it up and barring it. Some people find that particular fingering quite uh, uncomfortable, but you can certainly, it's really, really valuable to be aware of the top three strings of this as, as a triad. And um, the D shape in the cage system is the point at which, from a visualization standpoint, things can have a tendency to fall apart or be a little bit vague because you end up visualizing from the D string. That will all become clear very soon, but um, yeah. The D, sec the D area of the K system can be a bit of a gray area for some people. Um, moving on to C as a C shape. I know we had it down here, but this is a movable version. And then we keep moving up the fretboard. And of course, practice these ascending and descending, but we've got C, A, G, E, D, and then we continue to spell caged up the fretboard until we run out of frets. So those are the chords, those are the major chords. So the next step, we're gonna be adding layers to the cage system. So once we learn chords, we're gonna learn triads, and the fingering of these triads is unimportant 
Um, it's not unimportant, but it's, it's just kind of down to personal preference. We're going to start in the lowest fretted position, so we won't look at the open strings at this point, because what, what we want to do is create movable versions of each chord, arpeggio, and scale so that you can then go on to play this in as many different keys as possible. You don't just want to be playing this in the key of C, but for the purposes of this video, obviously, you know, we want to keep it concise. We're just going to stick to the key of C major. So we play C as an A shape for our lowest fretted version. The uh, triad arpeggio that goes with that is this. That's not the fingering I would always use. That's not the fingering that, 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 that I'm recommending you should use. That's just the notes that make up this triad arpeggio. As long as the notes aren't ringing into one another, you know, triads are very, very important in soloing when it comes to locating chord tone. So it's really important to learn these. So how we would practice this, we would play the chord shape, then we would play the triad. And then bookend it with the chord shape. So you're kind of make, making this mental connection that the triad and the chord shape are one and the same. And you can see the notes of the chord within the triad. Because when we play this chord, we're not playing the notes sequentially. If we're playing this particular voice in the C major, we have the root, we have the fifth, and then we've got an octave, we've got the root again. And then our, our first instance of the, uh, of the major third is on the B string. Um, but with arpeggios, with triads, we were able to play the notes in sequence. So root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth. So moving on to um, C as a G shape. So whichever voicing you, you opt for, use this one as your visualization standpoint. But that one is arguably more practical. And the, uh, the triad that goes with that... Now I'm using muting to stop those strings from ringing into one another. Um, but as I say, the fingering is completely up to you. So what you would do, you would play the chord, and then you'd play the triad arpeggio, and then bookend it with the chord so that you can visualize them as being one and the same. Moving on to C as an E shape, we've got the chord. This is the triad arpeggio that goes with it. Then we bookend it again with the chord. With C as a D shape, that's the chord. The triad that goes with that is this. Very, very similar to the, to the chord shape. And then we bookend it with the chord shape. It's very important to do that initially because you know you start to kind of make connections. And then we move into C as a uh, C shape. That's our chord shape. This is our triad arpeggio. And then you can see that fits really nicely into the chord because this particular voicing of C, we can play the notes of the chord in sequence like you could on the piano if you're playing all the white notes. So, you know, you've got root, third, fifth, and then root again, or octave. And it's the same for the arpeggio. As I say, we're adding layers. So our next layer is gonna be the pentatonic scales. Now. This is going to be C major pentatonic. We're going to start from the root note, so you can hear it as C major pentatonic and not its relative minor, which is A minor pentatonic. So we play the chord, then we play the triad arpeggio, and then we play the major C major pentatonic scale, and then bookend it with the chord. So what I'm doing there with that particular shape, you probably notice this position five of the A minor pentatonic scale if you're not familiar with your, ma with your major pentatonic scales. But um, we're going from the C, ascending the scale, taking it all the way down and then back to the root. So moving on to C as a G shape, we've got the chord, then we've got the triad arpeggio. Now we're going to play the major pentatonic starting from the root. And then play 
played a chord. So you know, you may know that as position one of the A minor pentatonic scale. Moving on to C as uh, an E shape. Here's the chord. That's a triad arpeggio. Here's the major pentatonic scale. And then bookend it with the chord. Moving on to C as a D shape. There's the chord. There's the triad arpeggio. And here is the uh, major pentatonic scale, starting from the root on the D string, and then skipping over. Walking it back up to the root, and then just wallop, play the chord on the end of it. C as a C shape. There's the chord. Here's the triad arpeggio. And the pentatonic scale that goes with that, starting from the root note. And bookend it with the chord. So the next layer from there would be, you could go on to look at major seven arpeggios, uh, which we will look at, major seven dominant seven arpeggios. But I would suggest the next layer from there, we're going from a chord, which contains three different notes, then we're moving on to the triad, then we're adding two extra notes with the pentatonic scale, and now we're going to add two more notes, so we're going to look at the seven note diatonic scale, so this would be C major scale. I'll show you the scale first, so starting from the root, and then you would practice it like this, chord, Triad arpeggio, major pentatonic scale, and then seven note. Diatonic scale like that. Moving on to C as a G shape. I'll show you the scale first of all. Then we play the chord, the triad arpeggio, the major pentatonic scale, and the seven note diatonic scale. If I'm talking too fast, it's just to fit everything into this video. And if I'm not talking fast enough, remember that YouTube has a very handy button where you can watch everything at double speed. So I'm talking really fast like that. So moving on to C as an E shape. C major, seven note scale. So we would practice it like this. Play the chord, play the triad arpeggio, play the corresponding major pentatonic scale, and then then the major scale, bookend it with the chord. Then, move on to C as a D shape. I'll start with the scale, and I'll start from the root note, and then I'm gonna skip over to the low E string just to get the sound of it in your head. And play the chord. Now, I don't need to kind of keep doing these over and over again, but the way you should practice that, play the chord, play the triad arpeggio, play the corresponding major pentatonic scale, and then play the seven note diatonic scale. And that's a really, really good visualization tool to kind of get that into your head. A useful, if not slightly irresponsible, analogy to use when visualizing the cage system on the fretboard is um, if you've ever stared at a lamp for too long and closed your eyes and you get an imprint of that lamp on your retina. I'm fully anticipating I love lamp comments, but if you think of the, uh, the cord as the lamp and while you've kind of still got the, the imprint of it kind of burnt visually on the fretboard, you can then visualize the triad, the pentatonic scale, and the seven note diatonic scale. Now, before we look at the minor chords, let's look at the major seven uh, chords and arpeggios because the triads will be the same, the pentatonic scales will be the same, and the seven note uh, diatonic scales will be the same. <laughs> A C major seven that you were playing first position would be this, you know, taking a regular C chord and then just taking your first finger off. For a C major seven chord, we've got this shape for the lowest fretted position and then a C major seven arpeggio. So 
So again, you can incorporate that into your visualization, you know, um, if you start seeing the chord and, and the uh, arpeggio as, as one and the same. Now, C major 7 as a G shape is a little bit kind of ambiguous. I think this particular voicing um, is quite handy. It's rootless. Uh, you could call it, I mean, you could call that an A minor 9, you know, but um, if your bass player is doing their job properly, they're probably going to, going to want to play the root note. And you could use that as a perfectly legitimate major 7 voicing. We've got the 5th, we've got the root, we've got the 3rd, and we've got the major 7 in there. And the corresponding major 7 arpeggio that goes with that would be this. Play it like this. Now, if we had a C major 7 as an E shape, we've got this, we can use this voicing, or we can use this voicing, or we can stick a root on it like that. So both really nice voicings. Uh, and the arpeggio that goes with that, the C major 7 arpeggio that goes with that. Moving on to C major 7 as a D shape. Well, that's the chord. That's the arpeggio. Moving on to uh, C major 7 as a C shape, we've got this. And the corresponding uh, major 7 arpeggio that goes with that. So at this point you may be wondering about dominant 7th chords. We'll look at those with a C root. Um, so from our lowest fretted position we've got this old favourite, C7, and the corresponding arpeggio would be this. Moving on to C7 as a G shape. Now this is a very usable shape again. It's rootless, it's got the 5th at the bottom so it's a second inversion. but. Really common. The arpeggio that goes with that would be this. Uh, moving on to um, C7 as an E shape. Well, you've got this voicing, but you can also play this. I quite like that one. Um, and the arpeggio. Moving on to C7 as a D shape, we've got this chord. And the arpeggio that goes with that would be. And then finally, C7 as a C shape, the arpeggio is this. So what about the minor chord scales and arpeggios then? Well, with the minor chords, scales and arpeggios, I like to teach them in relative keys. So we've been working in C major, I like to teach them in A minor rather than the parallel keys, so rather than go C major and then C minor. Um, and they're kind of based on their first position equivalents if there was such a thing. So a C minor first position shape would be this. Very highly unlikely to play it. A, G, E and D. You know, some of those you'll be familiar with, some of you, some of them you, you will never have played before or will never need to. We won't get hung up on that. Let's just look at the movable version. So we're looking at A minor. We're going to start on our lowest fretted position. So A minor as a G shape would be our lowest fretted position. And I would opt for this. Muting out the uh, A and the D strings. A minor as an E shape. Of course you know that one. A minor as a D shape. A minor as a C shape and A minor as an A shape. So the triad arpeggios that go with these shapes, so A minor as a G shape, that's your, uh, that's your chord. The triad would be Then the minor pentatonic scale that goes with that, well, it's exactly the same. As C major pentatonic, as is the uh, seven note diatonic scale is exactly the same, but we're just starting from an A note. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I teach them in relative keys because the pentatonic scales and the seven note diatonic scales are exactly the same. Moving on to A minor as an E shape. That's the chord. That's a triad arpeggio. The minor pentatonic scale. And the seven note. scale is exactly the same. Playing these lightning fast now. Um, moving on to A minor as a D shape. Well, that's the chord. The arpeggio would be the minor pentatonic scale. And the uh, seven note diatonic scale starting from A. And then practice these the same way as you did with the major shapes. Um, a minor as uh, an A shape. It's not a very practical chord to play, you know, in the context of a song, but it's great for visualizing arpeggios. So here's the arpeggio. The triad, and then the chord. So that's the triad arpeggio, and then of course the uh, minor pentatonic scale, and the seven note scale. Um, moving on to C as an A shape. Well, that's the chord. That's the arpeggio, the triad arpeggio. Then we've got the minor pentatonic scale and the seven note. Uh... So that's A natural minor or A aeolian. So that's how you would practice the cage system for minor chords, uh, scales, and arpeggios. So for the minor seven chords, uh, the G shape would be this, going from the lowest fret position. Uh, the E shape would be this. The D shape would be this. That would be our C shape. And then our A shape. And then you can play minor seven arpeggios as well, which is basically like a pentatonic scale, but without a fourth. So starting around the G shape. The E shape. shape the C shape and the A shape so that is the cage system for the major chords triads arpeggios pentatonic scales and seven note scales and the minor ones and of course the major seven and dominant seventh chords. So at this point, once you're fluent in C major and A minor, then move it through perhaps a circle of fifths, move it to G major and E minor, uh, D major and B minor, and so on and so forth. And, and you know, spend as much time as you can uh, getting really kind of fluent with this in all 12 keys. So a, a couple of caveats when it comes to the K system, that's the extent to which I have used it in my 34 years of playing the guitar. I use the intervallic formula based approach to visualize harmony on the neck predominantly, um, but you can apply the cage system to minor seven flat five chords. You know, some people might be asking about minor seven flat five chords. For me, I've never used the cage system for that, but it's really handy to know at least three shapes for the minor seven flat five chords. So one with its root on the uh, low E string, one with its root on the A string, and one with its root on the D string. That will really kind of serve you well. Um, another caveat or another question I'm kind of anticipating being asked is what about modes? Well, if you're learning the C major scale all over the fretboard, you're learning C major, of course, that's C Ionian. You're learning D Dorian, E Phrygian, F Lydian, G Mixolydian, A Aeolian, and B Locrian. So the cage system does apply to modes. So as I say, no idea how long this video is once I've kind of chopped it about and edited it, but I hope you enjoyed it. And please hit like and subscribe if you did. And if you're looking for an online blues guitar course, then check out my website, which is absolutebluesguitar.com. Cheers, everyone. I'll see you next time.